Hi there. Well, I just watched episode four and just... wow. If you were watching that thinking, this is insane, how is this even possible? Guess what? It was insane. And guess what? It isn't possible. Because what they showed didn't happen. Honestly, I cannot even believe this kind of misrepresentation and deception is allowed. Taking conversations about one thing at one time during one day and splicing it together with another conversation at another time from another day, even dubbing my voice when I wasn't even in the room, editing people into the room who weren't even there, changing facts, completely changing timelines. It's like taking a piece of a puzzle, each piece showing something that is true that actually happened, but then reassembling the pieces to show a different picture of something that isn't real. That is what the filmmakers did here with the power of editing. They filmed real events and then cut them up, taking bits from different events and then putting them back together to tell a story that didn't happen. This is pure, dark-hearted entertainment. A scripted drama by filmmakers masquerading as documentarians. I'll give them this. They fooled me. Coming over to my house for Christmas without cameras just to hang out playing games into the night, asking me for help with their struggles and their personal lives, countless hours of deep, intimate conversation, them applying and practicing my techniques and processes on themselves, spending birthdays together, exchanging gifts. They even shot Blake and Juliana a wedding video as a favor to me with happy, cheerful background music. The list goes on and on. I now realize that all of this was done to gain our trust and to lull our suspicions. If deception is their business, then business is good. I've been saying the same thing since episode one. They used trick editing, fake narratives, conversations taken out of context, and used all of us, Blake and Juliana included, to tell a story they must have intended to tell from minute one. Because none of it happened, as they showed you. For reasons that are now obvious to us, the film team chopped up three years of my life so as to portray me as someone who is constantly angry, jealous, and controlling. You know me better than this. <laughs> I admit that just like anyone, I can get angry. But they showed my anger totally out of context to tell a story that isn't true, especially about my relationship with Blake and Juliana. Once again, this last episode is so full of deceptions and misrepresentations that it would take more time than the actual episode to point them all out and explain why they are deceptive or misleading. But here are a few of the ones that bothered me the very most. This episode shows Blake moving out of our house, and of course they edit and splice and spin it to look like he does so because of my cruelty to him and Juliana. But Blake moved out before Juliana ever arrived in America. She wasn't even here when he moved out. In fact, the scene of them moving out was shot the night she arrived in America. And though it was sad for all of us, it also felt like a progressive life step at the time because none of us thought that him moving out would mean anything other than it would give Blake and Juliana a space of their own rather than pushing Juliana into a position where she would be living with Blake's ex-girlfriend and his employer with all the intensity and pressures and boundaries that come with that. You know the scene where Blake is burying some fish? They cut it to make it look like the fish had died on that falsified day that Blake decided to leave because of the falsified conversation between us. Nope. The day Blake buried those fish was because he left them in the sun for six hours, causing them to overheat and die. I am a vegan and an animal rights advocate, and I admit that upset me. But the point is that the filmmakers edited it to look like it has something to do with me and like it represents some symbolic death of the Blake that was part of my life. No words for that one. The point is, these filmmakers have continued to craft their creation around a false narrative that I saw Juliana as an adversary from day one, and like a jealous ex-girlfriend, sought to drive her out. They showed absolutely no context and did not present the true facts regarding our relationship in any way. They made it look like I saw an innocent woman as a romantic rival, and treated her like an adversary because I want to win Blake away from her. Let me say it again. My romantic relationship with Blake ended 18 years ago. We remained friends after that. Juliana couldn't be my romantic rival because there was no romance. Blake was my closest friend, employee, 
and we work together. But here's the thing. All that doesn't really make for a spicy tabloid story. So the episode shows me crying, wondering what I could have done to get Blake to love me more, alluding to some competition that I have with Juliana to get him to love me more than her. It also makes me look like an idiot. They have edited this footage to within an inch of its life to make it look like I am cruel to everyone. The audience is left thinking, duh, be nicer and people will stay. <laughs> Here's the reality. The reality is that we tried for months to work out a resolution to reassure Yuliana. It didn't work, and eventually she cut off all contact with us, and Blake found himself in a decide-between-them position, which ultimately led to him deciding to quit. The film crew shot footage of Blake that explains the whole thing and shows the true reasons why this happened. But the film team, of course, chose not to show that, because it would have cleared me of these accusations, and that was not part of their script. This entire series is a disgusting distortion of what actually happened. They had their sights aimed at destroying me, and they tried to use the person whom I was the closest to to do it. It is the most painful thing that has happened to me in my adult life. I have to tell you straight off the bat that there was a scene in this episode that was concocted as if from pure vendetta. In this scene, I'm in the kitchen with Blake and I'm furious at him, while he's standing there as if he is just taking verbal abuse with a look of shame on his face. They wanted you to think that my anger is because Blake had finally had enough of being treated poorly and had decided to leave, and so I was berating him for leaving. Just before that scene, I had told Molly that there are no consequences for people deciding to leave. They clearly wanted to show that isn't true. They wanted the audience to think that I am not a self-aware person because they make it look like I said one thing and did the exact opposite 10 seconds later. But strap your boots on for this one. When that kitchen scene happened, Blake had already left. Remember that he had moved out before Juliana ever got to America? In that scene, I wasn't angry at Blake for moving out. I was angry because that day, Blake did something irresponsible that actually sent both him and Juliana to the emergency room. There are several more reasons why I was angry that the episode did not show. I feel anyone in my shoes would have been furious, and anyone who knows the full story would agree. And I'm going to say it. In the face of those facts, I was pretty damn calm. But they left out those details and edited in totally different events to tell a story that didn't happen for the sole purpose of making me look bad and making Blake look like my victim, even inserting into the script things I didn't even say during that conversation. Things I said in other conversations in the basement of my house during other conversations about totally unrelated things that had nothing to do with Blake leaving. Also, Oh, and this one is especially interesting. When I called Blake weak during that conversation, that was taken from a different conversation where I was defending Juliana because Blake did something that upset her at my expense. But on TV, it's shown as an insult I hurl at him because he decided to leave. I need you to assume that anything I said when they weren't focused directly on my face was taken from a totally different conversation and then inserted into the scene where it did not belong. Wow. What they have shown you is not true at all. Also, there was a scene on the porch with Juliana where I asked her, what would it take for you to go back to Germany? They make it look like I want her gone, so I'm asking her that question to gain insight into how to make her leave. Well, the truth is in fact the exact opposite. Juliana was having issues at the time regarding her commitment to Blake and being here in this life in the United States. And I asked her, what was her tipping point? At that time, I was afraid that she was going to leave and wanted to know what needed to be done to prevent that. Also, you guys know me well enough. I never have a conversation like that where I ask one super intense question and then look away and sit in an awkward silence. That isn't me. That isn't what I do. This entire series is an avalanche of betrayals caught on film. That being said, I need to make something clear to you because some people are confused about this. Molly Monahan, the private investigator, did not work independently and did not work for the film team. She wasn't connected to any law enforcement or governmental agency. She worked for me. 
We hired her so that we could improve our business practices and avoid false conclusions that we are a cult. She spoke with me once. That's it. Then she handed us the draft report, and I've never spoken to her since. I'm not sure why she would betray me, her own client, and play TV personality, but I'll find out. Okay, so now let's talk about that scene where we're all discussing the non-negotiables. Guess what? It was my team that came up with that, not even me. It was felt that part of the reason why Juliana was unhappy is because despite several attempts to prepare her, she didn't have enough of an idea about what to expect when Blake brought her into his life. She wanted managerial input into how my personal life and business were run, which was not compatible with her entry-level status. We didn't agree with her suggestions, and that upset her. When this happened, I was painted as the bad guy. The non-negotiables were a fast, rough draft. I admit, my staff wasn't experienced with drafting a list of expectations. We have experts helping us with that sort of thing now. The filmmakers used the footage of my team brainstorming that rough draft to make us look bad, and the scene is edited to make it look like I'm imposing some set of rules on a group of minions, misrepresenting events to make it look controlling and cultish. Again, this scene is edited to create a false narrative, rearranging what I said to fit the narrative they wanted, which was intended to make me look bad, to make it seem like I want to take away people's free will and control them. Let me make this very clear. There is a big difference between setting boundaries and expectations and controlling other people. It amazes me that I even have to explain this. It is so obviously true. People are free to decide that if their personal needs and desires are in conflict with the boundaries and expectations that come with my company and my personal life, they can choose a different arrangement. What we were discussing at that meeting was a set of boundaries and expectations for someone joining the core team, working with us every day. Boundaries and expectations that anyone can decide is not right for them. In fact, some of you know Tristan by now. Tristan has decided that she wants to be a mother one day. She's in a committed relationship, surprise, surprise, with a man who is not a part of what we are doing in any way. Everyone around me, who works for and with me, supports Tristan in all of this, just as we would and have supported anyone who wants the same things. Of course, this makes us all sad because we love seeing her every day. But it's not something that threatens the relationship or her position in my company. There are all kinds of people who work for me, who have their own homes, who have their own relationships, who have their own children. The episode says that in the non-negotiable lists, it says that if you're part of the core team, you can't have children. <laughs> that just isn't true. It says that if you want to have children, you need to live in your own house. That makes sense, doesn't it? None of my employees should expect to live with me while they are raising their kids. I'm not ashamed to say that. For me, that is not negotiable. As I said, we support Tristan and her partner just as we supported Blake and Juliana. The reasons for the conflict with Blake and Juliana were very different, and the documentary doesn't show any of that. One more example that I personally find especially troubling. In one scene, they show my Ask Teal about emotions. It's a video playing on a screen at one of our workshops advising people not to run from their emotions. But that never happened. That video has never been shown at any of our workshops. That's why the editing looks so bad. And the scene of me running? They asked to take footage of me running. They didn't tell me why, and I had no reason to ask. But now I know they clearly planned on combining footage of me running with the Ask Teal video to make it look like I was running away from my emotions, and that I am a hypocrite who doesn't practice what I preach. Again, there are too many problems with this episode to mention. But let me end with this. The part at the end with people raising their hands is staged. They spliced a scene of the audience raising their hands that is unrelated to the question they showed me asking. They did this so they could get hands raised at the exact question they wanted. And again, 
they spliced an image of me making a smile at a different time into the scene to make it seem like the moral of the story is that I'm such a lonely, miserable person that the way I get my closeness is by people being in pain. You know, the opposite of my mission. <sighs> what is there more to say? I'm deeply troubled by all of this. I'm troubled by the casual and complex misrepresentations and distortions that are no different from lies presented as the truth. I'm troubled by what they were willing to do with people's lives for whatever gain they imagined or expected. And I'm super glad that was the last episode and I can now get back to my true work. But please know this. Too many times in the past, I have tried to take the high road and I did virtually nothing about this sort of thing. I realize now this was a major mistake. In fact, it encouraged people who intended to harm me and my work to think that they can harm me without any response on my behalf to defend myself, my family, my company, and the people who follow my content. And this is ending now. And again, I call on the filmmakers to hashtag release the footage so that everyone can see the actual truth. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.